building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 13, piping the steam plant. And the first piece of pipe to construct is the main piece of pipe. This goes from the manifold on top of the boiler to the turret, which is mounted on the baseboard. And I'm going to use quarter inch pipe for this. Because if I use 3 16ths of an inch pipe, that's okay for one steam engine. But when I open the injector steam valve, that's going to drop the pressure a little bit too much. So the larger the diameter of the pipe, the better it is. I'm machining one side of a commercial steam union, and then I'm going to thread this side of the union 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. And here, as usual, I'm setting my micrometer using the drill shank of a 5 sixteenths drill. And then I double check that this is okay by looking at the numbers on the handle. And now by using the micrometer, I can get exactly the size that I need, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch, to accept a thread, as I've just said, of 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I've mentioned once or twice in these videos the importance of calibrating your eye. If you do a lot of lathe turning to set diameters like 5 sixteenths or quarter of an inch in diameter, it's surprising after a while you can nearly get there by eye. Once I was turning a quarter of an inch shaft and I got there by eye completely, utterly and perfectly without using a micrometer. I only used the micrometer because I couldn't believe that I'd managed to turn a quarter inch shaft without the help of any measuring tools except for my eyes. I can get very close to the size that I want, but only once did I get it spot on. In this clip I'm using a tailstock die holder to cut the thread. For the threading process I use my hands, but to withdraw the die holder from the finished thread I put the lathe in reverse. Now it's time to fit this adapter to the turret. The washer's still stuck to the turret from the previous application of Loctite 542, so with a drop more 542 on the threads, I simply screw in the adapter. And then, using my trusty Barco spanner, I tighten it up. And just to recap, I made this adapter because I'm going to be using quarter inch pipe to connect the turret to the main manifold, and here's the pipe itself. In this clip I'm marking the pipe to length, and I cut this using the smaller of my two metal cutting band saws. And once I've done that, it was time to silver solder these components to the pipe. These are the coned unions with their respective nuts, and I'm not forgetting to put the nut on the pipe before I silver solder it. And I can't believe it all these years on that I still forget to put the nut on the pipe first. Usually when I'm videoing the process, because I'm concentrating on the camera's focus and the angle and the lighting, and sometimes forgetting entirely that the nut needs to go on the pipe first. Anyway, here's the silver soldering process once again. The end of the pipe was coated in Easy Flow number no. 2 silver solder flux, and this is not the flux that you would use for soft soldering, it is entirely different. Soft solder melts at a very low temperature, far too low for steam, but for really small steam toys like Mamods and Wilescos, etc., which work at very low pressures and therefore very low steam temperature, soft solder is adequate. But for any steam boiler using a realistic steam pressure, which can be anything up to 100 pounds per square inch, soft soldering is absolutely out of the question. The temperature of the steam coming out of a boiler that is at 80 pounds per square inch is hot enough to melt the solder, because as the pressure rises, so does the temperature of the steam. Silver solder melts at a much higher temperature, so for any soldering application, other than on a very small steam toy, you need to learn how to silver solder. And the silver solder that I'm currently using is Silver Flow 55. In this clip you can see the silver solder flowing freely around the joint because the temperature is correct and the type of flux used is also correct. This clip shows me fitting the pipe from the valve on the boiler down to the turret. As I fitted the pipe in position at the turret end, I realised it was a little bit too long and needed to be shortened. You can see here it's actually touching the condenser. So after I'd finished making this part of the video, I removed the pipe, heated it up, removed the pipe union, cleaned up the end, put a new pipe union on and re-silver soldered it. And while I was in silver soldering mode in the outer part of the workshop, re-soldering the pipe on the main steam feed, I made this one as well. This pipe goes from the outlet of the hand pump to the inlet of the water feed preheater. The idea being, as I operate the hand pump, the water goes through the preheater coil inside the condenser, which is hot from the exhaust steam of the engine, and warms the water before it goes into the boiler. 
This boiler feed water preheater is also known as an economizer because if you put cold water into the boiler, that's a waste of energy. But if the water that's been pumped into the boiler to replenish the water supply is hot to start with, then the steam pressure doesn't drop quite as much. In this clip, I'm fitting a piece of pipe from the other end of the feed water preheater to the clack valve on the adapter. And in this clip, I'm fitting another piece of pipe from the clack at the other end of the adapter to the outlet of the injector. And hopefully, when it's all put together, there'll be two entirely separate ways to get water into the boiler. One is the hand pump and the other one is the live steam injector. I still need to clean and polish all this piping, well that is apart from the main steam feeds that will be wrapped in string for heat insulation. Because of the addition of the Stuart No. 4 steam engine into this boiler plant, the exhaust from the engine needs to be fed into the other end of the condenser, because it's quite near where the exhaust of the engine is. So in this clip I'm showing how I cap off the other end. And it's simple, a commercial union nut and a stainless steel ball is all that you need to block off any of these steam unions. The ball seats in the cone and it will never leak, and this is not under much pressure anyway, as the condenser is not a pressure vessel. So now all I need to do is remove this blanking plug from the other end and fit a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch steam union in there to accept the exhaust from the steam engine at this end of the condenser. And my original plan of having the steam inlet from the exhaust actually lower than the steam outlet to the chimney because the centre pipe, which is a steam outlet to the chimney, has an extension pipe internally that goes right to the top but this steam union just goes into the condenser as you see it. So what's going to happen is, as the condenser fills up with water, there'll come a time when the steam is bubbling into the water, and I think this should make a different noise that will tell me it's time to empty the condenser. So here's an aerial view of the plant to show the progress so far. Most of this piping will eventually be polished up and become nice and shiny copper except for the main steam feed from the boiler tap down to the turret and the steam feed from the turret to the live steam injector. What I'm doing here is filling the water tank with some water to make sure there are no leaks and the good news is there are no leaks. And when I open the valve that the injector is connected to, water pours through the valve, through the injector, down into the overflow into the lower tank and then by using the hand pump I can pump it into the boiler as you can see here. Well, you can't really see it other than the reflection in the boiler itself and the noise of the hand pump, but you can see that the water's going up the glass. When the boiler's in steam, things are going to be slightly different. What's going to happen is the water in the lower tank, which feeds the hand pump, is going to become warm with the overflow from the injector. I didn't initially plan it this way, I've just realised what's going to happen. If I'm using the boiler hand pump to pump water into the boiler, it's going to pick up warm water from the tank, push it through the feed water heater so by the time it reaches the boiler it's going to be almost hot, which means that the steam pressure shouldn't drop too much when I'm pumping water into the boiler. Before dismantling the plant to finish the baseboard and secure everything in place, and also fitting the engine, I'll be giving this a steam test and that will be in the next episode. But for the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.